Several years ago, before he passed away, Fred Craddock was asked what he considered the greatest Christian virtue. Craddock thought for a moment and he said, gratitude. The greatest Christian virtue is gratitude. The story from the 17th chapter of Luke, verses 11 through 19, is about gratitude. Jesus is making his way toward Jerusalem. He's traveling between Samaria and Galilee. He stops in a small village and there are 10 men who have leprosy. Lord, have mercy on us, they say. And Jesus, Jesus heals them of their leprosy. I want you to go to the priest and show them that you are healed. But even before they got to the chief priest of the Jews, these men were healed. Leprosy, not only something that was a physical disease, but also something that kept the person isolated. Can you imagine these 10 men in a group of people having to shout to the others who pass by, stay away from us because we have a disease that may be contagious. Not only were they physically sick, but maybe even more important, anybody who has faced illness knows what it is to feel alone, to feel cut off, to feel that nobody understands. The 10 men are healed. And where they go after that, we don't know. Nine out of the 10 never return to thank Jesus. But where do they go when they're healed? Did they go to be with their friends? Listen, I haven't been with you for a long time. Now I'm healed of my disease. I can be with you and we can do things together. Or maybe some of them went home because they hadn't been home for a long time. Walking in, seeing his mother, Mom, I remember the times when you used to put your arms around me and hug me. I know that you probably are fearful that I still have some disease, but I want you to know I am cured. And when you feel comfortable, I look forward to putting my arms around you and you're putting your arms around me. His father working in the back of the house. He goes out to see his dad. Dad, you're not going to believe what happened. Son, you had leprosy, but I've been healed. Do you remember the time when I was a little boy and you used to put your arm around me as we walked away? from working together, and you told me how proud you were of me. Do you know more than anything else, the difference it would make if I could put my arm around you and you could put your arm around me? We don't know where these people went, but we do know that only one of them a Samaritan returned to Jesus. What healed these men? Was it their faith and belief in Jesus? There's nothing in the story about their having faith and having belief in Jesus. It simply says, Lord, have mercy. 
Mercy is that gift of God for all of us, regardless of whether we're in the church, regardless of whether people are in our circle of friends, regardless of what we may believe. There is a mercy of God that sees all of God's creation as God's children. Lord have mercy. And Jesus had mercy and cured their physical illness. But do you know, there's not a single word about faith. And especially, there's not a single word about gratitude. You and I know how it is. We just assume that people know that we are thankful for them. Why, Jesus must know, since we've been cured, that we are grateful, even if we never tell him that. And so, nine out of the ten never went back to Jesus. It was the one, a Samaritan, it stands out in this story like something around which all of our minds can pivot. The one person that we would least expect to go back to Jesus, a Samaritan. I've come back, Jesus, to thank you for what you have done. And Jesus says, where are the others that I healed? Do you know, I believe there is a deep sense of pain in Jesus' life that people to whom he had given the gift of healing never return to say thanks. Where are the other nine, he said. And there's almost a plaintiff cry in his voice. He looks at the one who's returned and he says, I want you to know your faith has now made you whole. Your faith in the old translations has saved you. It has taken the brokenness, not just on the outside of your life, but the brokenness on the inside of your life. You now, by faith, not just side. A word is changed. Place of hope and peace and joy and love. You've been changed. When I was growing up, my father had a drinking problem. It was called being an alcoholic. When I was 12, my father stopped drinking. And I'm so grateful for Alcoholics Anonymous and for the church. But at 12 years old, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand what was running in the deepest places of his life. I thought, I thought it was weakness. Later, when I went to seminary, and I began to work with some alcoholic 
men in a unit at a hospital. And I worked with their families and with their children. I began to see this is not weakness. It's a sickness. When I went home to visit my dad, after I had learned this, I wanted to talk with him. I wanted to tell him how proud I was of what he had done. I wanted to say to him, Dad, I know your own life was difficult. I'm so grateful for you. But when I began the conversation, he walked out of the room as if to say, I don't want to go back to that chapter in my life. I wanted to thank him. I wanted to tell him how grateful I was for who he was. But I was too late, too late. And he walked out of the room. Ten men were healed, but only one came back, a Samaritan. Where are the other nine? But you've come back. And I want you to know your faith has made you whole. Holding on to hope and holding on to the Christ who always holds on to you and to me. Amen.